Hello and welcome to the next vlog in the Essential Jesus series. Today we're going to be looking at the end of the Sermon on the Mount which concludes in Matthew's Gospel in chapter 7. Now if you're following along using the book you may have noticed that today's reflection has been entitled The Great Communicator and these last few chapters we've been looking at really demonstrate what Jesus' ability to communicate was. Well, he was to the point, he was clear, and he was able to communicate effectively the word of God. But why was he able to do that so well? Well, as it says in verse 28, the final verse of the chapter, it's because he taught as one who had authority, not as their teachers of the law. It says that because of this, the crowds were amazed. When reading scripture, I like to picture myself in that situation. I like to think, what would it be like if I was sat there listening to Jesus delivering the sermon? And I'm sure there are so many words to describe it. Amaze, brilliant, fantastic, awesome. I think it's one that must have been so hard to express how fantastic, amazing, brilliant, awesome it was. Now, this is quite a long piece of scripture, the whole of chapter seven to try and read and reflect upon in the short time of the vlog, even at the speed I talk at. So you might wanna take some time to read it for yourself, but I'm sure it has verses that many of us are already familiar with. But for now, shall we explore it using the titles from each section within the chapter? Jesus talks firstly about, in the chapter, about judging others and says in verse three, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Or simply, do not judge others. When I was younger, I could never understand how you couldn't, someone couldn't notice not having a massive plank of wood in their eye, which is quite surprising for someone who constantly falls over chairs and tables and doors or anything that's in their way. But how easy can it be to focus on the wrong that others do, but not perhaps see that we're doing it too? As a child, or when I was younger, my, me and my older brother, we did not get on. We used to argue about everything and anything possible. And my mum always used to say, it's because we're too similar. Now, my brother is six foot four. He's got a shaved head and he's got a big beard. And I remember thinking, how can we be similar? Um, especially when he's so annoying. <laughs> but as I've gotten older, I've realised that my mum was right. And the things that were annoying me or the things that he saw, that I saw that he did wrong, I was doing them too. I was commenting on the sawdust in his eye without noticing the plank in my own. In today's reflection in the book, it says that as Christians, we tread a fine line between hate and sin, but loving others. The phrase, hate the sin, love the sinner. And it suggests that because of the gravitas of this task, Jesus points us towards removing our own sin, seeking forgiveness for our own sin, putting that focus on us and trying to be proactive at a life without sin. Not an easy task, right? In the next part of the chapter, Jesus asks about, uh, talks about asking, seeking and knocking. Now, this is one of my favourite passages of scripture because it reminds, uh, it serves as a reminder to me of that, the fact that we're in a relationship with God. And on top of that, it's a living relationship. It is alive. These verses remind us that ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be, knock and the door will be opened. If we truly want something, we can ask God for it. If we are searching for something, we can find it with God's help. This is because the relationship between us and God is a two-way conversation. That's what makes it a relationship. 
But when we're thinking about the type of words here, uh, type of words used here, they're all verbs. They're all doing words. And for me, that reminds me I have to do something. For a relationship, for it to be a relationship, there has to be an effort made by us. We have to do something. We have to ask, we have to seek, and we have to knock. The next section warns us about false prophets. And for me, it, war it warns us to ask the question, who or what am I following? And is it or are they Christ-centred? We are in a world that is probably the most connected it has ever been. In a click of a button, our youth group was able to speak to a youth group in Moldova. And I think being in lockdown helped this connectivity to develop even more. Suddenly, our services were being viewed by people from all over the world. But this, with this comes a great caution that with us now being able to hear all these vo voices, which one should we be listening to? Well, Jesus gives us a really simple way to test this. He says to look and to evaluate the actions of it, to look at the fruit it bears. In verse 17, it says, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. If we're not sure, we can look at what it's leading to. Now, Jesus ends this sermon with the story of the wise and foolish builder. And after discussing preparing this vlog with Tony the other day, I have had the action song stuck in my head. In the story, he discusses of a wise builder who built his house on a good foundation, whereas the foolish builder built his house on sand. And when the rain came down and the floods came up, it was only the wise builder's house which stood. Now, I don't know about you, but reading the Sermon on the Mount can sometimes feel like information overload. In this passage alone, we've been asked or we've been told to not judge others, to work on our sins, to ask, to seek, to knock, to be proactive in our relationship with God, to be wary of false prophets and to evaluate their actions. This can almost seem unmanageable. But if we, like the wise builders, build our house on that good foundation, on the word of God, then when the rain comes, when life gets hard, when we face all these challenges that come with this instruction, we know that we are on the rock solid foundation of life with God. And to that, I say hallelujah. Have a great day, whatever you're doing, and we will see you very, very soon.